And here we are again. It's the next day, I got trusty impact with the 27 on there. We're gonna take that off. Uh, normally, uh, if you're not gonna use an impact, then you're gonna need some kind of holder for the crankshaft on the back. But since I have the impact, then I'm just gonna go to town on that and that's gonna come right off. Then we'll use the three jaw puller to pull the balancer off there. Now this, uh, I'm thinking, and, and I, I'm pretty sure I've done, gone over this uh, in a previous video when I took that, that engine apart right there, but not on this one. This one's a tiny bit different. Uh, the other one didn't have the, the AC bracket on there, except for the bolts there, just so I don't lose them. Uh, and this actually, you can see right here, is leaking a little bit worse than I had originally thought it was leaking, but I'm gonna get that all cleaned up. I'll probably pressure wash that and making it look as uh, pretty as possible. But let's get to it. Much easier. Don't lose your shims or your, your washers, the four washers there. Now with the three jaw puller, you're gonna need this in here, a few threads. Now the other one came off by hand. So hopefully this one is just as easy. Okay, now the last time I took it off, the balancer came off with this, but if you're gonna replace the front crank pulley, or the front, front crank seal, then you're gonna need to get this uh, off of there. Okay, do yourself a favor, don't do what I did and separate that flange from this because this is, these are your timing marks right here and the last thing you wanna do is take this off and then get this clocked wrong and then your timing's gonna be way off. You're gonna try to set your timing according to your timing marks right here but your timing's not gonna be actually that because this will be off. So um, leave that flange right here, attach to this, probably leave the pulley on there and just take off the big center 27 right there because the bolt will fit through the bolt will fit through there so you can just slide it off so do that next we're gonna have to get the AC mounting bracket off there's a Allen right there it should be a six millimeter yeah six millimeter Allen or is it six it's a six trust me and then there's Gonna be two more Allens right here. There's six there, six there. And then this is a stud that this will come off of. So I'll have to take that nut off. Still stinky. That oil's gross. Oh, there's actually another Allen back here behind the front crank sensor. Okay, got that sensor off. In case anybody wants to know, this nut is the metric version of a 5 16 Whatever that is. Probably an 8 millimeter. Didn't have my quarter... Um, quarter sockets or ratchet here, so... Did what I gotta do. Oh, 
That's that. We'll clean this up too. Next, I'm going to take off the lower pan. I'm gonna have to bring home some of my short, stumpy, quarter inch, five millimeter sockets because this one won't fit up there. So I won't be able to get out a bunch of the bolts for the upper pin, but I can get all these ones out, which are also five millimeters. That was good. Yeah, it wasn't even that tight. Maybe that's why it's leaking. Maybe the gasket just settled a ton. It gets crazy how loose this is. Like, this is how loose that bolt is. Drop that bolt in a bucket of freaking oil. Now, if you guys are wondering why I'm not using power tools for this, that was a work at using power tools, but I mean, I probably wouldn't even be using power tools on this at work, but it's, uh, I'm just paranoid. I don't like going to town with impacts and electric ratchets, stuff like that on 30 year old bolts. Cause you never know what's going to happen when you try to take it out. Like the one bolt on the intake manifold, when I took apart the other engine, the one bolt was stuck and it just, uh, the bolt broke. So I mean that that even happened with hand by going by hand. So I want to be able to have that bit of discretion whether hey I need to stop wrenching on this bolt right now because you can make your problems a lot worse. Lucky. Could have dropped that socket in that bucket of oil too. I'm already gonna have to go fishing for that other bolt. Lucky again. Well, never mind. Now I have one more bolt. There's the inside. Yeah. I'm gonna have to transfer over that oil pump. Good thing I got another one of these things. Yeah, oil pump's different. Here is the oil pump I took out of that other engine. Now, as you can see, the pickup is very different. Yep, that was short, so. I'm gonna take this one out, I'm gonna reuse this one. I'm gonna take this off and then use this because this is brand new. This is nice and soft and clean. So I'm gonna take that off, put it on there. Yeah, this thing definitely had the BHG because, you know, sludged that oil is pretty haggard. Well, now let's go fishing. I don't have a magnet with me, so we're going to have to use the gloved hand, which should be, yeah, this thing's only about that deep with oil. Oh, there it is. I 
And this one, just in case you're wondering, this is the one that actually holds the uh, one of the trans lines onto the pan. And it goes on, I think it's the second from the front corner on the passenger side. Okay, before I turn this engine back over, uh, you can see how clean this side is. We're going to do a quick time lapse cleaning that side, because I've only cleaned the one side. Okay, here it's all clean. Doesn't look like it, but it's clean, I promise. But one thing you wanna pay attention to is your EGR ports. And you wanna make sure, see how that one's getting a little plugged up there? You wanna make sure you clean that out before you put the head back together. Now that port goes right here, through here, and then it also comes out down here. You can see it right down there where the EGR mounts to. But you do wanna clean that out to make sure it doesn't get uh, plug because that will cause you to fail any emissions tests you might have. Well, it's upside down. <laughs> Guess it wasn't as empty as I thought it was going to be. I'm going to have to go get some absorbent from the parts store. But here we are. Now I can take the pan off, which I, I still have an issue because I have that. I have the hood shock, or not the hood shock, the uh, hood support that I have. I have a second one, but the entire top of the engine's on this one, so I don't know where I'm going to set that. It's taller than that space right there, so uh, got to figure out how I'm going to hold that engine up. Side note, heavy stuff like this, always get a helper. Talk about deja vu. It's like we've been here before. Anyways, got the pan off this one. Gonna take the pan off this one, gonna clean it up a bit, stuff like that. Now, I had figured out a way, or I have figured out a way to um, keep the engine from collapsing when it's on the uh, engine stand when I take out those two bolts right there. So, don't judge me, I'm using a floor jack. Sketchy as hell, but you know what? I don't have any other choice. If you guys remember from the last time I did this, there was a few, uh, there were a few bolts right here that we're quite a little bit difficult to get to, but it doesn't seem to be the case on this one, so should come off pretty easy.
So I changed my mind a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that pan on here first so I can get the, um, I'm probably gonna take out the oil pump, but uh, I'm gonna get that one on here just so I can get four bolts on this engine because this thing still has the heads and everything attached to it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna do that first. All right, let's pull it off. Finally got the dipstick out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this oil level sender is toast. That seems to have some kind of melted something or other coming out of that hole in the side of it. Maybe some kind of melted plastic or something. I don't know, but good thing I'm replacing it. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because you saw me do it in the last video, but with the oil pan off, the oil pump is a lot easier to get out, especially getting to this bolt right here. This right here is a 13 millimeter bolt right there, 13 millimeter bolt right there also. These are two eighths for the sender. And this right here is the tensioner. Basically it's like a big flat spring for the, um, for the, the guide for the oil pump chain. So other than that, just remove those and that's pretty much it. There's also a 13 millimeter bolt right here as you can see. So, take that one out also. One thing I wanted to show you real quick is checking the oil pump. I have the gear on here. You can see that it moves nice and smoothly. I don't feel any grinding, anything like that. It feels really good. And if I can get the sound on there for you, it actually makes a sucking sound. So, no, it's doing something. Well, here we are. Pans are swapped. So, that's about as far as I'm gonna get for, uh, for this video. Um, next video, we're gonna start putting the engine back together. So, I, I wanted to get this far because I wanted to get the bolts back in the bell housings of both of these these ones. So now I can flip this engine back over, uh, do other things if I wanna put the heads on. The front timing cover, or the front cover is gonna, become, is gonna be next. Then we're going to get the oil pump and then the, the other part of the pan on there. Stuff like that. So, um, thank you for watching. Hit subscribe. Give me that thumbs up.